Hi guys, welcome to my brand new series, All Bases Covered. Every month we'll be looking at methods and tactics that are relevant to that month. So here we are, it's freezing cold, the air pressure is sky high, and those conditions really do lend themselves to zig fishing. So today I have come to Ladywood Lakes in Yorkshire. Now this is a, a really deep lake, it's, it's almost 30 feet deep, so it really is perfect for fishing zigs. So let's get the kit out the van and get zigging. So this rod has only been in the water literally five minutes and we're playing the first fish of the day and this isn't really sort of that unusual if you can present a, a hook bait at the exact depth where those fish are sat and you've got a hook bait right in front of the faces then it isn't too unusual to get really quick bites Well, it might be one of the babies of the lake, but it's a really great start on a very cold January morning, just five minutes fishing, and we've got this really pretty scaly mirror. Right, let's get him straight back and try for one a little bit bigger. So as I mentioned at the start of this program, today we're going to be fishing with zigs, but what exactly is a zig? Well, a zig is a buoyant hook bait anchored in position and set to fish at any depth other than on the lake bed. So it could be six inches off the bottom or it could be on the surface and any depth in between. So I guess the next question would be why and when would you fish with zigs? Well, a lot of people think that zigs are primarily a summer tactic when the fish are visibly cruising around on the surface or in the upper layers. And yes, in these circumstances, zigs would be a great, a great line of attack, but their use is not just restricted solely to the summer months. Quite often during the winter, especially during periods of high air pressure, the fish tend to reside within the water column at whatever depth they feel they're most comfortable. In fact, they may only venture down to the bottom for really short periods to feed and this may only just be for a, a few moments each day and the rest of the time they are actually suspended within the water column. Now when it comes to choice of hook bait for zigs, my preference is just plain simple unflavoured foam. Uh, use these in conjunction with the Fox Zigger liners. Uh, my preference of colour would be black. Um, a lot of people think that because it's dark it's not as easy to see but I think quite the opposite is true. I think it stands out really really well in the water column and yeah I've caught probably more carp on black uh, than any other colour especially when it's fished higher up in the layers. Now if I was to use a zig uh, lower down say for example in the bottom third then I do prefer to add a, a splash of colour so either perhaps um, yellow foam 
or even just a yellow zigger liner with black foam but i think just that little bit of added color i find for me has got me more bites when fishing them shallow now why exactly this is i don't really know we can only sort of make assumptions but i think it's maybe it's because the fish are viewing the zig from above rather than from below and that little bit of color contrasts better against the dark lake bed now, although foam would be my number one choice of hook bait, there are venues that have bans on artificial baits and quite often foam, cork, etc. is included in this ban. So in these circumstances, I would fish with the 8mm Northern Special Mini Pop-Ups. You have a variety of colours in the pot and they are a great alternative hook bait to foam. Alternatively, of course, you can use whatever your favoured pop-up is and just whittle it down with a pair of scissors and that will make a great hook bait. Um, I do find that smaller hook baits are best for zigs. I, I don't know why, but I have found that, that smaller, something maybe is up to maybe like 10, 12 mil in size, has, has generally outfished larger hook baits when fishing with zigs. It's pulling back, isn't it? can't play the fishers quite as heavily as I, I normally would. I'm only fishing with a, a 10 pound zig and float hook link and a size 10 hook. So yeah, I've got to play them a little bit more gingerly than normal. So we've just landed that fish and that fish is still sat in the landing net and I decided to reel in the other rod and cast it exactly where I caught the last fish from and it's been about a minute and we're playing the third fish of the day. And it just goes to show that once you find the depth where the fish are at, action can be really prolific. As it happens, the fish I'm catching now, I, um, I'm catching 15 feet off the bottom in around 25, 27 feet of water. So just over halfway, that's where I'm catching them from. I started off by having one rod fished at uh, 12 feet, so just under halfway, and one rod fished at 15, just over. And uh, as soon as I had a bite at the 15 foot, um, I changed them both to that depth, but it seems that the fish are perhaps quite tightly shoaled at the moment because these rods are only being fished um, maybe two rod lengths apart and all three bites have come on, on the same spot. Again that's something that you expect in the winter months the fish can become tightly packed together all sat at one depth all in a, all in a huddle if you like but once you find them well, look what happens. So, our second fish of the session. Got a nice little mirror of about, about 12 pound, this one. Uh, and again, this fell to a, a zig which was presented 15 foot off the lake bed in around 27 feet of water. And it really does just go to show how effective uh, a winter tactic zig fishing can be. Right, let's slip this one back because my hands are getting cold and we'll take a look at the other fish that I caught just a few moments later. So this is the third fish of the session. Uh, another fish just into double figures, probably around 11, maybe 12 pound this one. And it really is great winter sport on those adjustable zigs. I'm really enjoying this session.
Now, a lot of people when fishing with zigs opt to fish with a fixed length zig, and that's absolutely fine, provided you know the depth of your swim and the depth of fish are sat at. Now, if you don't know the depth of swim, then obviously you need to get to work with a marker rod and, and try and find the depth. And that's only really good if the swim you're fishing is as flat as a swimming pool, because you could plumb up, find your depth, but for all you know, half a rod length to the right of that float, it could be a foot, two foot deeper, then your zig is no longer fishing how you want it to be presented. So that's the first kind of negative with a, with a fixed zig. The other one is in order to change depth, if you're fishing um, and the weather conditions change and you think the fish may have moved up or down in the water column, then the only way to change depth is obviously to reel in, make adjustments and recast, which may cause, uh, well, will cause, unnecessary disturbance to the swim. Another negative with fixed zigs is poor bite indication. If you're fishing with especially long hook links then that fish has a large arc in which you can move before it dislodges the lead and an indication is received at the angler's end. But there is a way to eliminate all these problems and it's my favourite way of fishing with zigs and that's to fish with the adjustable zig which I have here. So let's take a look at how exactly it works. So let's take a look at the lead arrangement first. I'm fishing a running rig with a lead attached to one of the angled drop-off run rings and coming down from there I've chosen to fish with a short boom section and coming down from that boom I have one of the edges drop-off heli beads and the lead can actually be either fixed in place like I'm doing here by putting one of the T pegs in front of the bead or alternatively you can fish it to be uh, dropped off, discharged on the take by putting in one of the PVA pegs instead. Now this is particularly useful if you're fishing weedy or snaggy waters where there's a risk that lead can become coarse on something uh, and yet yeah, it makes landing the fish much much easier. You can actually fish the the lead directly on to one of the run rings if you prefer, but I do prefer to have this short boom section. Coming down from the, the, the lead arrangement, we have the float itself. And this is fished in line. The line runs right through the center of the float and is attached to a rotating swivel. Uh, and obviously the hook link is attached to the other end of that swivel. And because it spins so freely, it eliminates twist and tangles. And the float and the lead kind of operate much in the same way as if it was a, a marker float, in that when you let line off the reel, the float can move up in the water column and obviously adjust the height in which you fish your hook bait. So talking a little bit more about the hook link itself, I mentioned it was a 10 pound zig and floater. This is ideal for fishing in open water. Obviously, if there was weed and snags present, then I may up to the 12 or even the 15 pound, but in open water situations like this, and the 10 is absolutely fine. Now, as the name suggests, this is a dedicated zig and floater fishing hook link. Um, it is buoyant, you don't want to be using any uh, heavy sinking monos or fluorocarbons, anything like that, something which may um, hinder the buoyancy of the hook bait and even pull the hook bait down so it's not fishing effectively. Um, now I've got three feet here of hook link and it happens to be the exact distance from the start of the butt ring to the roller on top of the reel and I'll explain a little bit more about that and why I do it like that a little bit later on. Um, coming down the hook link, I have the hook itself. It's a bit untidy because it's just caught a fish. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the hook. It is a size 10 zig and floater hook. Uh, again, it's a hook designed especially for this purpose. It has a slight outturned eye and that means it rem uh, the gape remains open. If you weren't to have that slight outturn of the eye, if you used uh, an interned eye, it would mean that the gape was closed and that would really affect the hooking of, of the rig. Um, so yeah, it's just tied simple, knotless knot, and I've got a small piece of fine hook silicon over the eye there, again, to increase the gape of the hook. So yeah, that's just a simple knotless knot, and I'm using one of the Northern Special mini pop-ups there, uh, pink's been the best color today. 
and yeah really really simple setup uh, alternatively in other situations i probably would have been using the zigger liner setups but yeah that's it it's a really really simple setup and it's one that's worked well for me so far today and numerous days previous to that So we now have our zig here ready to cast out but before we do I have a piece of PVA foam here which I'm going to roll up into a, a skinny sausage and on the base of the zig float there's a little slot for that foam to plug into. And what I'm going to do now with the hook is just nick the hook to the edge of that foam. Now what that stops that doing is it stops the hook link wrapping around the float and the main line causing it to tangle and preventing it from popping up in the water. So I've tied up my hook link here and it's the same length as the start of the butt ring to the roller on top of the rail. Now on this rod, that's exactly three feet. Now on a deep lake like this, where it's almost 30 feet deep, I like to work in kind of those three foot intervals. I, I don't think you need to be quite as exact as on a, on a shallower lake, where you're making perhaps small adjustments, small increments at a time. I think on a deep lake like this, altering the depths by three foot at a time is a great way to, to cover the depth and allows you to find the fish quicker. Imagine a lake if it was 40 foot deep and you had one rod set, perhaps just like a foot, a foot intervals on each rod, you're not really kind of covering, covering the water column enough to be able to find the fish, whereas if you work in larger intervals, I think it helps you find the fish quicker. Um, so that's why I've done it on this particular occasion. Um, also, our three foot is quite a nice distance, I think, from the hook bait to the float, although, I don't think the fish are too bothered about the float at all. I know people might think, oh, they might be scared of that in the water column. I, I don't think they are. If anything, I think they're perhaps quite inquisitive. And I have caught them with just six inches, uh, as little as six inches gap between the hook bait and the float. So I'm, I'm not too worried about the fish being afraid of the float or anything like that. When it comes to the cast itself, it needs to be smooth, controlled, and you have to stop the float just before it hits the water. Stop the lead just before it hits the water. So that's what we're going to do now. Nice and smooth. Stop the float just before it hits the water. Now this is quite deep, so I'm just going to control the, the line that goes down to lake bed. Now, let's just touch down there. So now we're going to sink all the line. Keep a tight line to that lead. You don't want to be using too light a lead in these situations as well. If you use too light a lead, you're not able to tighten down properly to the float. I'm using a three and a half ounce lead here. So I'm pretty tight there to the, to the lead, to the float. Just come back to the alarms. I'm just going to take out any slack. Every bit of slack line there is. I'm sort of feeling the line here with my fingers and then tightening the spool. I don't want to move that lead. Yeah, I can't, now I can't tighten any more. If I did, I would move the lead. So I know that the hook link is three foot long. So that hook bait is now six foot off the lake bed. Nine. Twelve. 15, 15 foot off the lake bed in around 27 feet of water. I know it's 27 feet of water because I popped the float up uh, to the surface, just like I would a marker float. I popped that zig float up, working it up to the, bottom, uh, to the surface. I know it's about 27 feet deep. So that hook bait is set to fish 15 foot off the bottom in 27 feet of water. So just over halfway. I'm using a nice lightweight bobbin there. 
don't want to use something too heavy that's going to pull the line down and that's it we're all set I've got the alarm set on full sensitivity but the beauty of fishing with the adjustable zigs rather than the fixed zigs is bite indication is much more enhanced because we're fishing with a running lead and the line is able to move freely through that run ring instead of having that big arc of line. I mean, if we had a 16 and a half foot hook link here, that's a big arc on what that fish can move, where it can move before it, it moves the lead. Here we've just got, well, we're more or less direct because the line's just moving freely. So as soon as that fish picks up the hook bait, then we'll receive an indication because the line can just travel freely through the run ring to the bobbin at the other end. Well, we finished this short day session with the biggest one of the trip, a really nice scaly mirror of around 14 pound. And it's been a lot of fun fishing with the adjustable zigs today. And I'm sure if I'd have been fishing on the bottom, I wouldn't have caught anywhere near as many fish. And I really hope you've enjoyed uh, part one of my new series. And I hope it's given you a lot of confidence to get out there and give the adjustable zigs a try because I'm sure they will help you put more fish on the bank.